What cybersecurity skills should you learn first as a beginner to get a job? Jumping right in, the first skill I recommend learning is cloud security. Now, there are two reasons why I highly recommend learning this. Number one is because most companies, from small tech companies to large fintech companies, are all heading towards the cloud. And more and more companies are hiring for cloud security engineers, cloud security and cloud architects, basically anyone who has a handle on how to secure data, how to secure users on cloud infrastructure. And the reason number two is because many of these big cloud platforms, the popular ones, like Azure, AWS, Google Cloud Platform, all have free training. And this is also because they want job candidates as well as companies to adopt their cloud software, their cloud infrastructure. So a lot of cloud learning resources you can actually find online for free. For example, Microsoft Azure is a very good example of this. You can learn a majority, if not all of the material for Microsoft Azure for free, which is a great place to start considering Azure, I believe right now in market share is the second largest cloud provider. The first being AWS, which they also have a ton of free resources. I'll also link an introduction course to cloud computing on Coursera. In my description as well. Cloud computing involves protecting data, applications, infrastructure that live in cloud environments from any unauthorized access, vulnerabilities, and other cyber threats. It's essentially taking a company's typical data center and entrusting it to be hosted with a cloud provider. Essentially, the cloud is just someone else's data center, but they typically are more secure. They've gone through more auditory requirements and compliance rigor. You can typically trust the cloud more so than, than a typical one-off data center. Of course, this may look different for government institutions or government agencies or big banks whose data centers may be very, very much locked down. But for the most part, Azure, AWS, Google Cloud Platform are known to be very rigorous in terms of their security standards. I know learning cloud security is a very broad term, but I would start with either Azure or AWS since they are the two biggest cloud providers out there, which also means that what you learn will be more applicable to the jobs you go into. But again, cloud security is a very broad concept. This includes authenticating to the cloud, how data is stored, how it's encrypted, how it's backed up, who has access to that data and the backups, and not to mention reoccurring audits. Typically that happen once a year, or if it's ISO, I believe it's every three years, but more and more companies are moving towards the cloud, so, so I do think it's a great skill to pick up with lots of online learning resources. All right, number two is how to use an SIEM. I know this is a very specific skill, but personally, I do think this is also very important, especially if you're interested in going into a defensive cybersecurity role. This means anything on the blue team, anything in an SOC or a security operations center. So what exactly is an SIEM? An SIEM is a security information and event management system. It's essentially a singular place where all the data from various different applications devices, servers, assets, all that data comes into one centralized place, which is the SIEM. And this basically makes it easy for companies to be able to track incidents because all that data is aggregated and can also be then analyzed in one place. Like for example, can you imagine back then where, where there was a data collection and analysis tool for just web applications and then another one for just network devices. And then if there is an incident where an attacker is going through a network and taking over multiple different applications or multiple servers, then that means the SOC team or the blue team would have to go through multiple different resources and dashboards to be able to even track this one attacker and this one security incident. So that is why SIEMs are, are kind of like the de facto standard nowadays. Most companies, especially ones to get more and more data, whether it's through more applications or more devices or more servers or more users. Essentially, most companies are going to get to a place where everything's going to be really hard to manage without an SIEM. But if you find yourself interested in some of the concepts that you learn, I do highly recommend checking out the Google Cybersecurity Professional Certificate. If you are watching this video, which basically means that you're a complete beginner, then that is a great place to start to get you the foundations, the basics of cybersecurity, and they also help you prepare for the CompTIA Security Plus with an additional discount for your CompTIA Security Plus exam after completing the Google Cybersecurity Certificate. And you'll also earn a dual credential once you complete both the Google Cyber Certificate plus the CompTIA Security Plus, so it's a win-win, and I'll have that link down in my description. SIMs help you detect and respond to incidents a lot faster, which I'm sure you guys have seen headlines of companies who, who may have been going through a data breach or a cyber attack and didn't know until five, six hours later. And one of the reasons for that may be that they're not properly utilizing their SIM, or maybe they're just not collecting enough information from their endpoints. So many of the popular SIMs are paid products like Splunk or Datadog, but there are also a lot of open source and free SIMs that you can use just to get some hands-on practice. I think this is actually a perfect example of a personal project that you can work on. The Elastic Stack is probably one of the most popular open source SIMs out there, which includes Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Kibana. And it's basically three tools 
tools used together to create an SIEM, which covers all of the typical SIEM tooling like log management, real-time search and visualization, and dashboards. And again, this list of cybersecurity tools I'm mentioning is very broad because of the fact that most companies will use these tools. Most companies probably have an SIEM, and that is why I'm sharing these as the best cybersecurity skills to learn first, because it's very likely that you'll be using these skills directly on the job, as I personally have in my early career as a cybersecurity analyst. I'll also link some references on creating your own SIEM for free using the elastic sack linked below. All right, number three on this list is networking. This one is not my favorite. And I always say this every time I mention networking, you don't have to necessarily be a networking pro. And I don't think that it's required to know every single port number, exactly what it does and be able to crawl that from memory. But I do think that it'll really help you on the job as well as to help you pass your interviews. Networking, I think is definitely one of the more popular type of questions that you can get in a cybersecurity interview. Honestly, as a cybersecurity professional, even if you're not working directly in network security or even closer to the IT space, networking is still very important to foundational cybersecurity concepts since considering the entire internet is a series of networks, though I will agree that is a very dumbed down way to explain the internet. But learning basic networking concepts like subnetting, what is DNS filtering, what is ARP, private versus public IP addresses, the most common networking protocols and port numbers, these may very well come up in your day job as a security analyst or an SOC analyst or even a junior pen tester. So even though you may not be using networking tools on an everyday basis, it still really helps to know the basics. And I will say that most of the more senior level cybersecurity professionals that I know have pretty decent expertise around networking and network security. If you're studying for the Security Plus certification, they'll cover a lot of basic networking concepts at a very high level, so you'll at least know common terminology and the low-level networking 101 basics. If you're just starting out in cybersecurity and looking for a cybersecurity bootcamp, then I recommend the Springboard Cybersecurity Bootcamp, which has a 100% job guarantee, which basically means if you complete their cybersecurity bootcamp and you don't find a job within a certain amount of time after graduating, you'll get a full tuition refund if you qualify. They have a hands-on technical cybersecurity curriculum, career support, and they also prepare you for the CompTIA Security Plus. So you definitely have a lot of different options when it comes to your learning for starting a cybersecurity career, but this is definitely a great option if you qualify for their job guarantee. And you can also get $1,000 off the entire bootcamp using my code with Sandra, and you can check if you qualify for their get a job or get your money back guarantee using the link in my description. All right, number four on this list is auditing and compliance, AKA GRC. So I recently made a video titled, the future of cybersecurity is GRC. And most of you seem to like that video, but a lot of you also said the GRC was very boring. You didn't like writing policies. You didn't like dealing with compliance, dealing with audits. And that is very understandable. And I know exactly where you're coming from considering I've been on both sides of audits, going through an internal audit as well as working on an external audit with third-party auditors. But the main point is this, governance, risk, and compliance Auditing ties to a company's bottom line. This is how companies will attract new customers, will retain their existing customers because they've gone through ISO 27001 or SOC 2 type 2 or PCI. Their customers want them to have these fancy certifications to prove that their applications meet a certain standard of security, which is one of the biggest reasons why I believe GRC auditing and compliance are going to be very big in the next few years. Even now, I believe that GRC is a very, very huge space. And I know it's not everyone's cup of tea, so I'm not going to force you as a beginner to go out there and read up on, on auditory requirements or, or new compliance requirements. But I will say that it's helpful for you as a beginner to understand the entire auditing flow. So why do companies need to get audits? How do audits impact the business? Which companies want what audits? What information do auditors look for? And what are the standard requirements for some of the most popular audits? I would say ISO is a very popular place to start, specifically ISO 27001, just reading through the requirements and understanding what standards companies have to meet to be able to pass their audit is a great way to understand what security frameworks that companies have in place, as well as just a good security baseline for understanding what a good security program is. Especially if you're just starting out with no experience, it's helpful to know that, hey, companies nowadays should be using this level of encryption and above. Not using that level of encryption needs to have a really, really good reason why and a really niche use case for it. Knowing these things can make a huge difference comparing you to another candidate who may have no idea what a SOC 2 type 2 audit is or what the difference is between a SOC 2 type 1 versus a SOC 2 type 2. I guarantee that you will impress your interviewer if you have some background knowledge in GRC and compliance in auditing, no matter how dry and boring it may sometimes tend to be. All right, the next thing I want you to focus on is technical writing. I know this sounds 
probably like one of the most boring things on this list as well. But trust me, again, this is going to be very important. For example, I could have easily said something like pen testing, but I know not every one of you is going to be interested in red teaming and pen testing just isn't broad enough of a skill for every cybersecurity beginner to learn first. So instead I've included technical writing and this is why. For example, as a junior pen tester, let's say you finished conducting a pen test. Maybe you spent an entire week going through an application, you found three vulnerabilities. While well, you go back to your client or your customer, whoever owns the application, probably the dev team for that application, and you tell them, hey, I found these three vulnerabilities. And you may be thinking, great, my job here is done and that is it. But that is definitely not it. What exactly is the end product of a pen test? You may think that it's a completed pen test, but it is actually the pen test report. This fancy piece of paper is going to be the final product that you're going to be sharing with your client. And it should have breadcrumbs, it should have screenshots, it should have detailed information of how to recreate the vulnerability so that the dev team can understand how to remediate it. It should also have some recommendations for remediation, priority levels, any potential mitigations. Essentially, this piece of paper is all the information that you're dumping from inside your head to give to someone else who most likely is not a cybersecurity professional. It's essentially translating your work into something more general so that even a C-suite person or an executive can understand it, so that the development team can understand it, so that your manager can understand it, so that a project manager of the dev team can understand it. This is the key to technical writing, not just security documentation, which I agree is also very important, but technical writing is important for everyone, not just the people who write security policies, which probably is more aligned with GRC. But even if you're someone who is an SOC analyst on the blue team, you could be writing technical documentation as part of your incident response plan. After closing out an incident, you're going to have to write the documentation around what exactly happened, what was the vulnerability that caused the incident, what was the remediation or mitigation, were there any risk accepts, as well as all the technical details that go into that incident. So no matter what role you're going into in cybersecurity, I believe technical writing is very important. In fact, this probably just goes back to communication skills and being able to communicate clearly and effectively on paper, as well as of course, just presenting yourself vocally is going to be very important to your career growth. And no matter how cool the hands-on work is for cybersecurity professionals, if it's not documented, that also becomes an auditing issue. So it all comes back to GRC, right? Which is why technical writing and documentation is very, very important. All right, so I've rambled for long enough just last but not least, just one last skill I won't go too deep on, but that is operating system basics. This is essentially the basics of OS, whatever flavor that you're most interested in learning. Just pick up some of the basics around what makes an operating system, what is a kernel, how malware can take over an operating system. All these basic things can be very helpful in your growth as a cybersecurity professional if you're just starting out. And again, it kind of also goes back to networking foundations because you're basically building up your skills from the most basic level and learning the foundations of operating systems is a huge building block that can really help you in your career. And of course, as always, I'll link a bunch of learning resources in my description and you guys can check those out at your leisure. But thank you guys so much for watching. If I miss any skills on this list, feel free to let me know. Or if there's any that you highly recommend learning for anyone else in the community, then I would highly recommend dropping it down in the comments. I would really appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to sign up for my free newsletter where I share my thoughts on cybersecurity careers and the job market and just overall tips and resources every week. And that newsletter will be linked in my description and also join our discord. This is just a shameless plug for everything at the end of the video, but thank you guys so much for watching. I post videos weekly and hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.